but the subtitle is the most important part because it's about creating the future that you want to have. Um, one of the things that I say frequently in China, in Chinese, is Wei Lai Yo Ni Men Chuang Zhao, which means, uh, you, you know, we create or you create your own future. Uh, and so one of the things I ask people all the time is that question, what, what kind of world do you want to live in? What kind of future do you want to create? And this is my approach to looking at any aspect, any transit, eclipse, whatever's going on, I like to think about it in terms of how can I use that in my personal life? What does that mean in terms of my journey? And how could this be useful or helpful in the lives of people I know and the lives of my clients as well? And of course, for my students. So my approach when it comes to forecasting is always uh, to try and consider the opportunity uh, and the chance to create something in your life that every transit brings us. The example that I use for my students is if, you, if you're having a Neptune transit, as one of my clients did many years ago, who was an accountant and came to me uh, under a Neptune transit, way back in the days when Neptune was still in Sagittarius, if you can believe that. Um, he was having trouble focusing at work. He was confused and unable to pay attention. And this guy had a lot of Virgo, and he was a CPA in the old days. This was way before we all had personal computers and that kind of software for accounting. But... This guy was having was making mistakes and he was having trouble focusing. And I suggested to him that he uh, first I asked him a question. I said, Are you do you do anything creative? Because he's having a Neptune transit. I want to know if he's interested in music or something like that. And he said, No, I'm not a creative person. You know, I said, Well, if you were a creative person, then what do you want to do? And he said, Well, I, I've always thought it would be it would be fun to learn how to play piano. So we talked about it a little, and I encouraged him to take piano lessons, which is actually what he did. He went out, took piano lessons, and then he bought a keyboard first. But he eventually contacted me again and said, hey, I'm, uh, I'm learning how to play piano, and I'm loving it. And you know what? My ability to focus and concentrate at work has improved significantly. So he did two things during this Neptune transit. He learned how to deal with the negative side effects of Neptune by finding a creative outlet, a way that he could express the Neptune side of his brain, creative side. And uh, he learned something. He learned how to play a musical instrument so that even when the Neptune transit was over, he didn't forget how to play piano. In fact, he still plays today, and he's been retired for many years. Um, the, the point I'm making is that every transit is this way. We can learn something, no matter what the transit is, whether we learn to play piano or we learn something else on the personal growth level. Every trend is an opportunity for us to acquire either a, a skill or an understanding that we didn't have before. All right. I think a lot of you know that, but... I'd like to be able to talk about it that way. First, let's take a look at something that just happened recently here. And I was mentioning this to Marcella when we were chatting before the before this broadcast today. This is the solstice that we just had. Some of you may wonder, wait a minute, we've got a zero Aries chart on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, why is there a chart for Beijing? Well, the only reason I set one up for Beijing is not only because I live there, even though I'm I'm not there now, I'm home in Atlanta or in Peachtree Corners. But I set it up for Beijing because I happen to notice that at the moment of the solstice, at least Beijing time, which was 12.21 p.m. on the on the 22nd, 
uh, there because they're 13 hours ahead of the east of the east coast that the sun happened to be within a, a less than two degrees from the midheaven and i looked around to see if there were any other cities to where the sun was that close to the midheaven at the moment of the solstice and there there weren't uh, so beijing um in, just coincidentally and and, and I don't know what this is going to mean in the world. We can speculate. That's what we do as astrologers. But you can see the sun up there on the midheaven. So that at the moment of this solstice, uh, the capital city of Beijing uh, stands out um, and may suggest, perhaps, that China will play an even more significant role in the world in 2020. Uh, we don't know what that is, but I will let you speculate about that. The point is, we have the solstice chart, and the reason we look at this is that it gives us a glimpse, in, to me, into the new year, because the solstice, you know, represents a, a key moment. Most of our calendars, going all the way back to Stonehenge in the Western world and similar types of calendars even in China and other places is is really the root of our astrology uh, and here of course we see uh, the Sun and Jupiter are conjunct in Capricorn for this particular solstice so in addition we have uh, Saturn and Pluto getting closer and closer together for their little conjunction next month and what one of the things that stands out to me uh, in it aside from the obvious of the Sun-Jupiter conjunction, is Mars is sextile Saturn and Pluto. We can see Mars is slightly separating from a sextile to Saturn um, and applying uh, to the sextile to Pluto. But to me, this suggests that whatever we are passionate about in our lives, and we've got kind of a double statement about it because we got Mars and Scorpio, we got the moon and Scorpio. Whatever you are passionate about in your life, you have maybe an opportunity to achieve and accomplish your goals, your agenda. Because here we have Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn with Mars, sextile Saturn and Pluto. Mars is about action, getting things done and taking action uh, for something you feel strongly about, you feel deeply about it, you are passionate about something in your life, whether it's in your personal life, your professional life, whatever. So that this solstice represents an opportunity for you to move ahead, to take action in that sense. Um, it might involve resources, money. Scorpio is, to me, one of the money signs along with Taurus. Uh, and might have to do with uh, combining resources in some way to move ahead uh, with goals, with objectives that you have. So you want to look, obviously, at the houses this falls in in your chart to see how this opportunity uh, might relate to things you're trying to achieve. If you had this Saturn and Pluto, for example, falling in your second house, with Mars sextile, then it could imply an opportunity for you financially. Maybe you would, or if it, Saturn Pluto was falling in your eighth house and Mars was sextile this, perhaps you're trying to refinance your home uh, or you're trying to raise money for a project or an enterprise that's important to you. Again, uh, this is clearly a, an opportunity in that sense. We have other things to notice. We can notice that uh, Mercury is separating from the square to Neptune that we had last week. I'm sure some of you have some interesting stories to tell about the Mercury-Neptune square. But to a great extent, the, the Mercury-Neptune square is about reconciling the rational mind with the intuitive mind, how to get the logical side of who we are to work with our imagination with more of the intuitive feeling side of who we are. 